So thank you for having me. I really hate false positives, and I'm here today to hopefully raise your dislike for the term as well. So about me, I've been in the security industry for about 15 years already, and 10 of those in the finance industry. I've been working as an engineer in various positions like security and network engineering. And since about six years almost, I'm now in, working in SOCs. And right now my position is as a SOC architect. So I pretty much design like the processes and the structures on how we do all of the analyzes and resolutions and all of the events and handling them. Now about false positives. As you know, false positives usually is about is there a threat for the company or not? And this is the usual distinction that is made if you're analyzing an event. I'm talking about security monitoring here. And most often the process, if you have one in place, is only treating the symptoms and not what is actually causing the alert. And in my opinion, this is not going far enough because if you're actually having a real security incident, you want to have up-to-date information in your CMDB. You really need to have all your, your tools configured well and in place because else you're going to be lost as soon as you're actually having a problem. So the problem really is, today in my opinion, that a SOC isn't about only, unfortunately, about the incidents and the forensics and doing all of the interesting analyzes, but we're more and more just an operational data verification and technical security quality assurance center. So we're making sure that the data that is aggregated is actually correct and can be used when a security incident is happening. Now, my goal as an architect is to build good processes, intelligent processes even, and efficient workflows, and I want to use all of the capabilities that we have in the best possible way. Now, how do I do this and why? Well, the intelligent processes is because we do have many junior analysts. You know how hard it is to find good people. And the problem is that we need to teach those people to ask the right questions, because being a good analyst is all about asking the right questions. And so I try to build those right into the processes. Um, so they can learn by following the process what the questions are that they need to ask. I try to build efficient workflows to not blunt and bore out my people because what I've also seen is really many people bore out, burn out in working at SOX because they have so many false alarms. They get an alarm and they already know that they don't need to treat it the way and with the priority that it should because they're already expecting it to be a false alarm. And so the attention isn't there and in my experience, it's also if you're looking for a false alarm or an issue, then you'll always find one. So it's like you won't even see the signs that would distinguish it from a real event. And the other thing really is a little bit the bottom word thing for the management as well. <laughs> you want to use the capabilities like the best way you can because m management has trusted you money to spend on devices and if you don't use that money well they won't give you more in the future now how do i do this i created a taxonomy and this taxonomy i released in a paper about a year ago and um i first presented it on it at first this summer in edinburgh it's pretty much eight different categories and I distinguish between the solution types, so um, who can do something about it and who is it important to, and the alert calls. And I distinguish between the if it's a process problem or a configuration problem. Because I don't know if, how many of you have ever heard of the three Ps. That's pretty much what management uses. They are usually talking about people, about processes, and about products. So what I want to show is in terms that they understand where we need improvements. And in my opinion, the only thing that should be done on people is get them better ed education. So I really focus on the processes and the configuration problems. Now, we start with the first two categories. These are the categories that reflect errors that can be corrected in a SOC internally. You have the announced administrative user actions on the left side, which is a process problem, and you have a lock management rule configuration error. So the difference is an announced administration and user action is pretty much 
Someone in the company, for example, run a pen test, and they told you before. So what you could have done is you could have already suppressed those alerts that you will be coming because you most likely will have like the source IP address for that, which means that once you get the event, you could have known already and you wouldn't have had to run after those events. So you wasted your time in a SOC by running after events that you knew that wouldn't be like a problem or not. And the other category are the lock management rule configuration errors. <laughs> These are errors in your CM. So the rules that you are alerting on, you configured the wrong way and you want to correct them because you are the one that can best like improve on this and make sure that you won't be alerted for the same false alert again. So this can be that the pattern was wrong or that you misunderstood something, that a lock source wasn't used the right way and you can implement the action on it. Um, and you see, I distinguish here between, like, with the next steps that you can take. And it's, um, like what I just said with verifying what is actually meaningful because, um, it, it's very possible that things are alerted that you don't want to actually alert on because the policy might even be allowing it or you don't have like clear, um, guidelines set out for your company. What is an allowed action? What is a known good? What is a, um, a known evil. I mean, you can go from that. So you want to distinguish. So this is stuff that you can really impact yourself. You're not lost on those events. And the next categories are actually the worst ones. These are the ones that you need to work through your company with. You have the unannounced administrative user actions and the detection device rule configuration errors. So what is meant with those is you either have user doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing and they don't tell you before. It's, for example, the network engineer that just wanted to run an Nmap scan to find out if that and that host is actually up, but it's going to create an alert with you. And if they didn't tell you before and it wasn't followed the process, they might be either doing something that they shouldn't be doing or you could at least make sure that it's done in a way that you can detect so you won't run after problems that aren't actual problems. And this is one of the most complicated things because detecting device or detection device rule configuration errors are things like, for example, an IDS that isn't in your control and is configured in a bad way because you are getting the alert of the IDS and you need to run after those events. And if this is co not configured well, and for example, there's rule sets active in the IDS for systems that aren't working in that subnet. So you running after events that never made sense at all, you want to be able to illustrate that you're having a problem there and that this area in the network, in the in your company, is not configured in a good way. And you want to do this in a political correct way. So these statistics that you get at the end of the month will help you illustrate that you're not the one with the problem, but your false alarms that you're getting are actually caused by misconfigurations in the company and that it needs to be like approached in a bigger way and in a better way and by talking to all of those teams. So yeah, usually it's really security architecture that needs to be updated or you need to talk to those specific people to implement better rules. Now we come to the better ones, the key business process artifacts. These are the categories that in my opinion help to get value out of your service that you're doing for the company and help you with strategic decisions. You have the bad IOC rule pattern values. So this is for example, if you on a proxy have an AV vendor that is giving you IP addresses and those IP addresses, they're not bad anymore. They used to be, but the list is just not up to date. The Provider isn't giving you good quality for what you're paying them for. So what you want to be doing is you want to track those numbers. You want to make sure that eventually you can point out that this provider you're giving much money more to is not giving you the quality that you want to be having and that you might be needing like a new partner in that area in the future. The test alert is something that in my opinion is quality assurance. We need to be proving, especially if you like working in regulatory environments, we need to prove that our rules that are working and that they're alerting for what you want them to alert. So having test alerts isn't a bad thing. You want to have them, but you want to exclude them from the reports that you give to the management because they're not false positives. And um, if you distinguish it the right way, then you can filter them out. So they remain important, but 
you don't want to make wrong decisions based on those events. Now we come to the fun ones. The confirmed attack with the IR actions and the confirmed attack attempt, but there wasn't any action on it. So with the confirmed attack with IR actions, this is the one where we got the education for. This is the one where we do the forensics training for, where we actually can do analysis on and where we most likely are like working with many other people of the company to like get the systems back to the state that they should be in. So it could be a ransomware outbreak. It can be a phishing that you're running after. It can be whatever <laughs> there is, but these are the interesting ones that we really want to resolve. And this is really, I mean, this means someone broke in to your systems. So you always, most likely, if you're following like a NIST um, 861 standard or something, you always will include already a lessons learned. And that means that you already most likely can point out what are the improvements that you should be doing in your infrastructure to not have a break in at the same point again. Now, with the confirmed attack attempt without IR action, this category is something like, for example, an AV alert. You might want to know that someone tried something, but it was blocked. Or, for example, also with IPS, you want to know that someone attempted something, so you can do your work on behind and fixing things, but it doesn't mean that you actually had a problem. Or, and this is like a small thing, but a kind of important one if you're working in a bigger company, it's an accepted risk. Because if by policy it was accepted that it's tolerable to have this kind of alert and you no, don't need to run after it, you don't want to teach your analysts that it's okay because it actually still is a confirmed attack attempt. It should be taken serious, even if it was blocked. It means someone tried something on you. And to know what was tried and who tried it might help you if you like run after a meter attack and know all of these kind of things and like read reports from those groups. You know what else they might be trying. It just helps you. And it's actually, even for management, it's proof that... The money that you invested is, was well invested because the tools that you got and the configurations that you had work well enough in place to protect you from the danger that you have out there. So you really want to include those in the SOC report to show that the money was well spent. So again, this is important for making strategic decisions because based on those alerts, you can say how well your um, view is on where, what areas of the company and where you have what detection capabilities. Now, with the benefits, you want to and can identify where time is actually being spent. So this not, does not only show you what you can do further, but you can see that, for example, when you have many... Um, Mm, this is now a little bit small, unannounced, I think is the top one. So if employees don't follow the best practices, and it usually means that they're running after or creating alerts for you and they didn't tell you before. So if it's unannounced, you want to do that and you need a lot of um, improvement, you need to talk. It's probably a security awareness problem even. I mean, most people might not know that this sysinternals tool or this PowerShell tool is actually something that also an attacker is using. And you might be talking to those sysadmins and find a way how you can distinguish it so you know that your alert is actually, or that alert created by the sysadmins is not an alert that is created by an attacker. So you can find and talk to them and find out ways on how you can detect it and in the future suppress those specific alerts from those specific sysadmins. And so you won't waste time anymore. And now if you also have like many um, alerts configured or like the wrong way on the systems out there, so like firewall rules, IDS rules, proxy rules even, um, you want to talk to those teams. You want to help them illustrate them what the problems are and you might need to do workshops. It's probably going to take a lot of time. But you can this way show that it's not you who's having the problem in the SOC, but it's actually a company-wide problem and that you need to address it on all of the levels. Now, if you have, um, for example, people that tell you about, like with, for example, the pen test, you knew about the pen test. I mean, it means that you and your SOC can actually work on your suppressions. You can do your improvements on your own. And if you have like these many bad IOCs, it's really a, a sign that 
your trust level might need to be adjusted because you just know for the future that this and this provider is giving you bad quality and you want to improve on this and you don't want to trust him because you don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night and have a standby alert for a connection to an IP address that never ever was like a problem now anymore. So you want to address these and you want to go on with these. And yeah, here we have our one true positive because unfortunately as much as it is, I mean, I, I think we have like had, um, if you see this from an experience, usually it's perhaps 95% false positives and there's 5% false, uh, like true alarms that you're actually running after. If you're like in a bigger company and you can't control all of the stuff that you're running after. So you really, longing for those single events. Now, these categories do give totally new ways of creating KPIs. KPIs are key performance indicators. So this is what the management uses to measure how efficient you are and how good you are. And for example, if you create Instead of just like measuring by false positive, true positive, you use number of lock management rule configuration error events per month. This is something you want to keep low because it means your rules weren't in a good quality. And if you adjust your rules and correct your rules during the baselining still and like make your learnings of them, this means that you at least control your part of the game that you can. And having less than 10%, I would say, is a pretty good quality and shows that you have good people that know what you do, what they're doing in the SOC. If you have number of announced administrative user actions events per month, this is also value you can control and you can keep low. Because, I mean, you can never, like, I totally understand if you get those alerts because, or that there's this um, information that there is a penetration test, you probably won't have all of the things suppressed beforehand. But if you keep it below 10%, it's still a good sign that you know what you're doing and that you try to avoid work that you shouldn't be doing. Now, with the number of bad IOC rule patterns values, I would say if you have more than 5%, it shows that you really need to like make sure that for the future, these kind of alerts don't alert anymore in the same critical way as they are right now. So you want to have track of those. It's, it's really goals that you can work towards too. And now with the number of confirmed attack attempts without IR actions, I mean, this is the category that should be the highest. In my experience, the number of unannounced administrative and user actions. So people doing crap on their machines and doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing, executing things they shouldn't be doing. And it was somehow in the environment that they're working at allowed that they could do it. This is unfortunately what happens to most in my experience, but this should be what you're doing. You should be protecting the environment and you should be showing that your protections are working and that you can resolve all the things and block them on an early stage. And without our actions, for me, really is like the next level where you get all of the people on board and the cert active and running. So, and this is the last one is the at attack attempt with the IR actions. There we have the problem. If the number is very high, it means your architecture is crap. You pretty much are running after too many events because you're not preventing them. You're not detecting them early enough. You will need to invest to make sure that you're not constantly like trying to solve fires all over the company because you can't do like what you should be doing if you're just running and solving fires all the time. And if the number is very low, it means that the rules that you aren't detect, uh, that you have for detection probably aren't as good as they could be, because I mean, it can also be that everything is safe, but you might also just want to get more rules then and improve your rules and like go through those mitre attack techniques, find out what else you can detect on, see what else you unlock sources you have to detect further things earlier in the cyber kill chain. Um, this picture is actually taken from the paper that I've released. So the paper really was about six pages, published it last year. It was recently peer-reviewed by ACM and should be published in the next DTRAP journal, special edition. And um, so I'm quite proud of that. It was actually peer-reviewed and they like also thought that it was a good IT to just 
um, start to find out what is actually happening. And the thing is, if you start to improve your environment, like with every action and every alert that you get, you will most likely break snake oil AI. Because I've recently learned that there are providers that want to um, assume when an alert pops up if this is a false positive or not. Well, that this algorithm can do this, it needs a learning base, which is constantly the same over about six months or so. So if you're improving and actually adjusting your infrastructure all the time, it can't learn on a stable basis and the predictions won't be correct. So I'm sorry that I break your snake all AI with that, but I actually think it's kind of good because we don't want to be using and spending money on something that isn't actually solving the problems because they're still promoting running and getting alerts for rules that aren't configured in the best way. So you always want to have the best possible configuration. So I'm fine with this. Um, so my next thing really is call to action. Implement those rules. I um, release them with Creative Commons license. The paper is documenting for analysts and a technical perspective how you can do it, what you are the examples that you can use it for, what is the fault behind it. And I also submitted it to um, the MISP repository with the taxonomies there. Um, it's all Creative Commons open source. Use it make experiences with them, tell me how they are, if it helps you illustrating the problems, and then we can further improve on it and tell those managers who mostly also, unfortunately, are only junior managers in security um, what the actual problem is and that it's not us, the SOC, but that we have so much work to do over all of the company. So that's it. Thank you.